Question number 1c. The area in square feet of the horizontal cross section h is modeled by the function f given by f of h equals 50.3 over e to the point 2h plus h. So again, the in general, we want to know that the volume is going to be the area times the height. So it says, based on this model, find the volume of the tank, indicate the units of measure. So the change in volume is going to be the area times the change in height. So if I were to show this on this graph, the area is going to be given by the height of the graph. And then if we take some small sliver of delta H, then we have the volume, a small change in volume. We can write it this way. We can say that dV is equal to the area. Well, the area function is f of h times dH. And if I want to find the net change in volume, it's going to be the integral from 0 to 10 of f of h times dH. So this area is going to be, is going to calculate the volume of this function. So then we can do this, we can plug this in, we have V is equal to 0 to 10 of the function was 50.3 over E to the point 2H plus H. Now, the problem with this function is we cannot anti-differentiate this. So this is the calculator section. So we need to be able to use our graphing tools to be able to find this area using the graphing tool. And by using the, the integration function, or, the, or we can also use the shade area function, okay, we need to calculate this area in here. This area works out to be 101. This volume is equal to 101.33, and that's going to be cubic feet. So again, this relies on us being able to use our graphing calculator to be able to calculate this area using the, the functions on the calculator. In D, it says the water is pumped into the tank when the height of the water is 5 feet. The height is increasing at a rate of 0.26 feet per minute. So first of all, we need to identify where we're going to be doing this calculation. It's going to be at height equals 5. And we want to do this at the, and they also give us the rate of the dh by dt. And this is going to be 0.26, and it's increasing. So make sure that we understand that it's a positive rate. Okay, we have to be careful of the direction of the rate. So using the model from part C, find the rate at which the volume of water is changing with respect to time. So dV, we're trying to find dV by dt. So we're trying to differentiate the integral that we have up here. So this integral represents the volume. So we need to differentiate the volume expression, which is an integral. Well, we can, we can do this because we have or we can use a fundamental theorem of calculus where the derivative and integral are going to undo each other. So when we differentiate this, I'm going to end up with the f of h function because they essentially undo each other. However, the problem is we have the h function is an embedded function. So it's really important that we recognize that we have to use the chain rule here. That h is an embedded function, so using the chain rule, I need to differentiate dh by dt. And by doing that, we now have, we can now use that dh by dt information that was given. So that's key. It's important to recognize that we have to apply chain rule. First of all, we're being tested on the big idea here or the fundamental theorem of calculus that an integral and and derivative undo each other. 
but we also need to recognize that this is an embedded function and chain rule applies here. So once we've done that, we can then just evaluate this. We want to know the dv by dt at t equals or h equals 5. And that's going to be equal to, we just plug in the 5 value into the f function. When we do that, we get 66.5160. Five one seven approximately, and this is square feet, and we're going to times that by the dh by dt, which was given at five feet, at five feet. The dh by dt is 0.26 feet per minute, and so calculating this all out, we end up with a final rate of one point six. Nine four cubic feet per minute. And so again, it's important to, to indicate the units of measure. This is an important thing in the, when we're talking about solutions for the AP calculus exam, the units of measure are, are gonna be important because they are gonna be worth marks for the exam.